सर सुन रहे सर गुड इवनिंग माई रेस्पेक्टेड फैकल्टीज एंड माई फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर निराजन श्रेष्ठ टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट ऑन आई फ्लो नेजल कैनला सिस्टम दिस पिक्चर इज शोइंग द नेजल कैनला सिस्टम मशीन एंड दिस this middle chamber this is a cha humidifier chamber humidify chamber and uh, it will eat and uh, humidify the uh, uh, oxygen and air and uh, uh, this is connected with two tubes uh, one one tube is uh, connected with oxygen flow system uh, main uh, flow system high flow system and uh, another tube is a, a heated tube uh, which is uh, uh, connected with the nasal cannula and this is the nasal cannula uh this chamber is also connected with uh, uh, uh distilled water uh in our uh, hospital in emergency department we can see the high flow nasal uh, cannula machines uh, in that machine we can see uh, the nasal cannula systems uh, which is providing uh, which will provide a high flow uh, uh, oxygen uh, systems high flow nasal cannula is a uh, oxygen therapy which will provide oxygen therapy is an innovative respiratory support for critically ill patient with acute hypoxemic respiratory failure uh, recent studies suggest that high flow nasal cannula is uh, effective in hypercapnic patient with stable status so the, uh, this high flow nasal cannula system will provide a gas flow Uh, above thirty liter per minute uh, and up to seventy liter per minute in adults, and it will also heat the air up to, uh, from thirty two degrees centigrade to thirty seven degrees centigrade, and it will also humidify uh, the air up to hundred percent. This high flow nasal cannula is not a mechanical ventilation system, but it is considered as a uh, respiratory support system. uh this flow rate of high, high flow nasal cannula is it starts with 30 liter to 35 liter per minute and it go up as tolerated by patient uh, and uh, the great effect is achieved uh, mainly in 60 liter per minute if we give uh, uh, the uh, oxygen therapy in 60 liter per minute then we can achieve the uh, great response from the patient and this high flow nasal cannula system also provide uh, the fio2 from 0.21 to 1 that means 21% to 100% and it also provide uh, active humidity and we can control the temperature uh, uh, to humidify the air so uh, it it will provide uh, 32 degrees centigrade to 37 degrees centigrade so there are uh, various benefit of high flow nasal cannula system uh, it will uh, <coughs> Uh, uh if we use high flow nasal cannula it will be comfortable to uh, patient and uh, patient will show the compliance so um, during um, using uh, during usage of this high flow, high flow nasal cannula uh, patient can talk patient can eat and drink also but in non invasive uh, uh, ventilation like bipap uh, patient will uh, uh, feel uh, discomfort and uh, they cannot eat they cannot talk during the therapy Uh, this is the machine which is available in our uh, uh, emergency department uh, <clears throat> this machine is showing uh, this display is showing that uh, the temperature is uh, <clears throat> uh, temperature setting is done in 32 degrees centigrade and uh, uh, it is providing 100% of oxygen and it is providing 30 liter per minute of flow of uh, oxygen uh, in one minute uh, this is the stand connected with uh, uh, this uh, machine and uh, this bottle contain uh, sterile water and which will helps uh, to humidify uh, the air and this is the uh, <coughs> tube which is connected with cannula system this is the nasal cannula uh, <coughs> this high flow nasal cannula system provide various physiological effect and those effect are Uh, pharyngeal dead space was out uh, reduction of nasopharyngeal resistance positive expiratory pressure uh, it will provide 
positive P pressure and uh, alveolar, another effect is alveolar recruitment. Another physio physiological effect is humidification of air and it will provide a great comfort and better tolerance to the patient. And, and lastly, better it will control uh, better it will provide better control of fio2 and better mucociliary clearance so one by one i will uh, describe it shortly physiological dead space was out the main uh, and the great uh, 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 effect of this uh, uh, high flow nasal cannula system is uh, phangeal dead space was out uh, uh, it provides uh, high flow of oxygen directly into nasopharynx, so it will help to wash carbon dioxide and reduce carbon dioxide rebreathing. It will reduce carbon dioxide rebreathing, so uh, that will help ultimately help in uh, <clears throat> uh, decrease dead space and increase alveolar ventilation. Uh, that will lead to pharyngeal dead space wash out. So high flow of oxygen improves exercise performance in patient with COPD. It will provide exercise. Uh, it will improve exercise performance also, and uh, severe oxygen. Uh, it will decrease severe oxygen dependency by enhancing oxygenation. It will provide severe oxygen dependency also by enhancing oxygenation. Reduction of nasopharyngeal resistance. Another physiological effect is reduction of nasopharyngeal resistance. So, nasopharyngeal. Uh, uh, nasopharynx facilitate humidification and warming of inspired gas by contact with large surface area. When inspiration, uh, inspiratory gas cross this large surface area, retraction of nasopharyngeal boundaries result in a uh, significant increase in uh, inspiratory resistance compared to expiratory resistance. So it will, um, it will uh, create a CPAP uh, effect. So CPAP will reduce supraglottic resistance up to 60% by mechanically splitting the airway. High flow nasal cannula system will minimize inspiratory resistance also. So uh, by this effect, it will, uh, it will help in reduction of nasopharyngeal resistance. Another phys physiological uh, effect of uh, high flow nasal cannula is creating of PEEP effect. It will provide a positive expiratory pressure effect. Uh, this positive air pressure effect uh, generated by high flow oxygen provides a certain level of pulmonary distending, uh, pulmonary distending pressure and alveolar recruitment. And this pressure is uh, created when uh, <coughs> patients close their mouth, uh, uh, when close their mouth during uh, inspiration and expiration, uh, mainly during inspiration. It, it provides a median pressure of 7.4 centimeter of water at 60 liter per minute with mouth closed. So uh, to, uh, <clears throat> to generate a maximum effect uh, from this uh, high flow nasal cannula, uh, the, we have to give, uh, we have to provide oxygen therapy uh, at least uh, up to 60 liter per minute. And expiratory, pressure with, uh, it will also provide expiratory pressure with mouth closed, which was higher than uh, with mouth open. So uh, if uh, patients close the mouth during um, respiration, then it will uh, increase the PEEP effect or it will create the PEEP effect and uh, it will help to uh, uh, distend the lungs and wash out the uh, carbon dioxide from nasopharynx. And there may be leak during the uh, this hypomonasal nasal cannula therapy. So smaller leak may also create uh, increase in resistance to express, expression, resulting in higher nasopharyngeal pressure, uh, that is PEEP. So leak can be minimized by using nasal cannula greater than 50% of near size uh, <clears throat> uh, to create a maxima, maximum effect. Uh, and to decrease the leak, we have to use the nasal cannula uh, that those you know, with size must be greater than 50% of uh, near size of nodes. And another uh, <coughs> physical, physiological effect of uh, uh, high flow nasal cannula is alveolar recruitment effect. This high oxygen flow will provide, uh, will make a correct hypoxemia by several mechanisms. Thus, 
contribute to ele elevation of respiratory distress syndrome. PEEP, uh, which is created by Iflu nasal cannula, provides certain level of pulmonary distending and alveolar recruitment. <clears throat> Recent study on postcardiac uh, surgery shows high flow nasal cannula significantly increase uh, in expiratory lung impedance and airways pressure compared with low flow. Uh, humidification and tolerance. I, I flow nasal cannula system produce humidification and it, it helps to greater tolerance to the patient. High flow of, uh, high flow of cold and dry oxygen uh, used during high flow nasal cannula therapy increase airway resistance. So addition of heat, if we add heat and humidity, the, uh, and <coughs> Humidity, humidity in this system that will help uh, in great tolerance, greater tolerance to the patient. And it is compulsory uh, with high flow, uh, this heat and humidity is compulsory with high flow nasal cannula. Active humidification improves mucociliary function and it will facilitate secretion, uh, clearance, secre secretion clearance and decrease atelectasis formation, which improves ventilation perfusion ratio and oxygenation. Uh, another effect, physio physiological effect, is better control of FiO2 and better mucociliary clearance. This high flow nasal cannula system uh, uh, provides and it will deliver essential humidity through high flow nasal cannula and it can prevent drying of airway, uh, avoiding inflammatory response due to drying of mucosa, minimize airway constriction, and reduce work of breathing. It will help to maintain effective delivery of oxygen uh, to lungs. Due to uh, clearance of uh, mucociliary, due to um, uh, mucociliary secretions and uh, due to FiO2 effect, uh, it will help to deliver uh, oxygen to lungs. Uh, by providing optimal humidity, patient can clear secretion uh, effectively and reduce risk of infection, particularly in COPD patient. Uh, there are various uses of high flow therapy. Uh, uh, due to use of uh, this, uh, using uh, high flow therapy uh, uh, will lead to improvement in oxygenation. <coughs> it will uh, improve, uh, help in, it helps in improvement in respiration rate. So if the patient is, uh, uh, respiratory rate is higher initially, then if we use this high flow nasal cannula system, it will help to reduce uh, respiration rate. It will uh, help to reduce uh, this uh, work of breathing and it will improve dyspnea and patient will feel comfort. And it also helps uh, patient recover faster following extubation and shorter ICU stay. If we, uh, there are various uses of uh, high flow nasal cannula uh, uh, during uh, extubation uh, uh, during before in intubation and uh, uh, we can uh, use this uh, system uh, in emergency department uh, in hypoxemic patient so there are various uses of uh, high flow nasal cannula system uh, uh, this high flow nasal cannula system have uh, various clinical evidence and uh, which is available in uh, various uh, conditions like acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, post-cardiac surgery, post-extubation period and pre-intubation period. Emergency, uh, it can be used in emergency department, in uh, hypoxemic patient or in uh, acute dyspneic, dyspneic patient. Uh, it can also be used in bronchoscopy and other invasive procedure. And it can also be used in acute heart failure and chronic airway disease like uh, COPD and bronchitis. Uh, no, chronic bronchitis. There are various, uh, uh, this, uh, I will explain uh, shortly uh, uh, the usage of clinical evidence of uh, uh, this uh, high flow nasal cannula. In case of acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, uh, uh, clinical trials in ICU patient shows significant uh, improvement in both clinical and physiological parameter after 30 minutes of high flow nasal cannula in comparison with standard face mask oxygen therapy. Uh, it is studied uh, in a ROCA. 
recently first experience with high flow nasal cannula therapy as uh, 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 repeated by uh, <coughs> uh, uh, as uh, reported uh, in 52 patients uh, in 52 patient with persistent uh, hypoxemic respiratory failure despite of oxygen with convention uh, mass face mass but not with indication of intubation this patient had median respiration rate of 28 and spo2 of 93.5 percent under 15 liter of uh, per minute of oxygen therapy uh, from uh, with face mask uh, but in when we used high flow nasal cannula it enables significant uh, reduction of respiration to 24 from uh, 28 uh, it reduced to 24 uh, uh, per breath per minute and spo2 uh, increased uh, from 93.5 percent to 98.5 percent uh, and our, uh, it is a, re a recent study of, with uh, another study of uh, another study uh, with 38 patient with uh, acute respiratory failure uh, due to uh, community acquired pneumonia uh, the use of high flow nasal cannula associated with significant reduction in respiration rate heart rate uh, supraclavicular uh, retraction um, thoraco abdominal and uh, <coughs> significant improvement in pulse oximetry this improvement seen as early as 15 to 30 minutes of therapy uh, uh, 15 to 30 minutes of high flow nasal cannula therapy and six hour after uh, um, uh, and six hours after the uh, emergency treatment. Another effect is post cardiac surgery. Uh, in post uh, <coughs> uh, in post cardiac surgery, uh, uh, the uh, use of high flow nasal cannula system has shown greater effect in uh, uh, IC, uh, uh, greater effect uh, uh, which will, which helps in reduction of ICU stay and uh, greater improvement after. Uh, uh, cardiac surgery. Uh, next is post extubation period. Uh, if we use high flow nasal cannula in post extubation period, it will reduce uh, <coughs> uh, routinely. If we use routinely uh, in uh, uh, post extubation period uh, for uh, for hypoxemic respiratory failure in self extubation patient in ICU. Uh, uh, Reintubation was significantly less frequent in high flow nasal cannula. And another effect in pre intubation uh, uh, during uh, endotracheal tube, uh, this ET tube is critically ill patient is associated with severe life threatening complication in mainly due to hypoxemia. So, in these cases, nasal cannula do not uh, help or interfere with the laryngoscopy. And so, if we use high flow nasal cannula, it is uh, used to deliver oxygen uh, uh, during the apneic period of tracheal intubation. Uh, another uh, clinical event, evidence is use of high flow nasal cannula in emergency department. So uh, in dyspneic and hypoxemic patient, uh, if we um, use this high flow nasal cannula system, uh, this will uh, help to help, uh, this will helps to help the patient uh, of greater uh, compliance. Uh, this oxygen therapy is one of the first treatment provided uh, uh, according to the uh, current guideline, but uh, in emergency department, uh, and the oxygen therapy is commonly delivered by face mask uh, <clears throat> and uh, from nasal cannula. So rapid relief of dyspnea and correction of hypoxemia are not always achieved by this conventional system. So, uh, recent different study uh, shows that uh, high flow nasal cannula can be considered first uh, line therapy for selected patients coming in emergency department uh, with acute respiratory failure. This shows better improvement uh, compared to this uh, low flow oxygen therapy. <clears throat> uh, in case of uh, bronchoscopy and other invasive procedure, also, we can use this high flow nasal cannula system. Uh, during bronchoscopy, gas exchange usually impaired due to sedation and uh, mismatch, uh, mismatching of ventilations uh, happens. So, hypoxia, hypoxia is common during procedure 
and worst decrease occur during uh, bronchoalveolar uh, lavage which has risk of uh, cardiac arrest or arrhythmia so to avoid this uh, uh, to avoid this bronchoscopy induced hypoxemia oxygen supply can be delivered by high flow nasal cannula so recent study shows that high flow nasal cannula uh, at the rate of 60 liter per minute pro produce better result compared to face mask uh, and uh, this low flow oxygen system uh, in case of acute heart failure uh, high flow nasal cannula is a good uh, uh, alternative to traditional oxygen system for treatment of patient with uh, acute heart failure in case of acute heart failure so uh, secondary of acute heart failure due to uh, mainly due to pulmonary edema uh, so uh, in case of pulmonary edema this high flow nasal cannula system uh, has a greater effect in, uh, and uh, uh, great improvement in hypoxia and hypoxemia. Uh, this hypocannula system, this device provides a constant FiO2 and, uh, uh, and this second use of nasal cannula, secondary use of nasal cannula uh, reduce the amount of uh, respiratory dead space and generate constant positive pressure directly proportional to the flow and resistance created during expiration which contribute to increased oxygenation. And another <coughs> clinical evidence of high flow nasal cannula is in chronic airway disease, uh, mostly in COPD and uh, chronic bronchitis. COPD and uh, this bro uh, chronic bronchitis are both airway disorder. These are characterized by neutrophilic airway inflammation, mucus hypersecretion and retention and impaired mucociliary transport. So this study suggests that airway surface dehydration may play important role in pulmonary damage in chronic airway disease. Recent study uh, shows that at least one to two hour per day of uh, <clears throat> long term uh, per day of long term hum uh, humidification therapy significantly decrease frequent exacerbation compared with uh, usual care. Uh, usual care. So. Uh, we have some opportunity to verify the effectiveness of high flow nasal cannula system in a in severe COPD, uh, severe COPD patient, <coughs> and uh, which is suffering from uh, uh, this uh, hypoxemia or hypercapnia, and um, uh, and uh, there are some technical issues uh, in patient interferes. Uh, this. High flow cannula system. Uh, if we start the machine, then it will uh, provide 60 liter. It can provide up to 60 liter of uh, uh, oxygen in uh, in one minute. So, uh, uh, so we have to start uh, in low flow. In case of COPD, we have to start in uh, start from 30 liter per minute, and uh, we can gradually increase the uh, flow rate from 30 to uh, up to 50 uh, or 60 so uh, may, uh, and another is it uh, it can uh, we can control flow and fir2 also so it uh, this high flow nasal cannula system can uh, uh, provide 0 0.21 to 1 of fir2 <clears throat> uh, contraindications there are some contraindications of high flow nasal cannula so um, in case of reduced level of consciousness or uncooperative patient, if patient is not uh, not co cooperating or patient, if patient is unconscious, then it is contraindicated. Uh, in case of epistaxis, uh, uh, in case of epistaxis, there will be bleeding. So from the nose. So um, if we uh, if we uh, use this uh, nasal cannula, high flow nasal cannula, it will provide a pressure. So that may uh, exacerbate or that may increase the uh, further bleeding. So it is contraindicated. In case of facial injury, if there is facial injury, then uh, high flow nasal cannula is also contraindicated. And uh, uh, airway obstruction. 
just now I uh, elaborate that in uh, uh, if there is uh, COPD or bronchiectasis, then we can uh, start the this high flow nasal in low flows uh, uh, in not low flow uh, from 30 liter per minute. But if there is obstruction in airway uh, due to foreign body or due to mass, then uh, it is contraindicated to use high flow nasal cannula system. Uh, <coughs> This is a uh, one of the study uh, which was done in uh, type two respiratory failure in COPD. Uh, there are four cases uh, was studied in this uh, um, um, article. So nasal high flow therapy for type two respiratory failure in COPD. A report of four cases. Uh, this was uh, uh, there are four patient. Uh, patient one, uh, he is a 80, 83 year male and uh, it is, he is a case of dementia and long standing severe, severe COPD. So he had, uh, he do not, uh, he had uh, uh, no intubation order. He had no intubation order in file and his glaucoma scale uh, is eight and he had shallow breathing at the rate of 30 per minute. So in this study, the trial of 16 hour therapy with nasal high flow nasal cannula, this nasal high flow system uh, was started. And uh, after starting, uh, uh, before starting the initial ABG, uh, BBG, this uh, venous blood gas uh, report shows uh, <coughs> pH of 7.16, that means acidosis and PCO2 of 80 and bicarbonate was 20. So this patient had uh, respiratory acidosis and after uh, uh, uses, uh, after using this therapy after 16 hour, uh, this uh, is, uh, a BBG report shows greater improvement. Uh, his PS from 7.16 uh, increased to 7.35, that means almost normal and PCO2 was 50. So PCO2 reduced from 80 to 50 and bicarbonate also slightly increased from 20 to 26. So uh, patient after this therapy, a patient regained his normal level of consciousness and discharged with oral steroid. So this uh, study has shown the great effect and uh, better tolerance to the patient uh, in case of uh, respiratory acidosis. Another case is uh, patient two. This uh, patient was 55 year male and he was obese with known case of schizophrenia and known case of COPD. Uh, and he was not treated with uh, of uh, obstructive sleep apnea and with chronic uh, tens uh, retention of carbon dioxide, chronic retention of carbon dioxide, and he also had uh, diabetes. So. He previously uh, refused CPAP therapy and uh, he had uh, no ventilation order. He also had no ventilation order. So his glass, glass scale was too well. Uh, before uh, this high flow uh, therapy, his BBG report shows pH of 7.27, partial carbon dioxide of 100, and uh, uh, his bicarbonate uh, was 32. After 20 hours of therapy, 20 hours of uh, this nasal hypotherapy, uh, uh, his uh, BBG reports was uh, almost normal. Uh, pH was 7.38, partial carbon dioxide is 68, and bicarbonate uh, is 34. So this partial carbon dioxide re reduced from 100 to 68. But this 68 PCOT is still uh, PCO2 of 68 is still uh, higher, um, uh, uh, but uh, I think he is a chronic retention. He is a uh, um, patient of COPD with chronic retention of carbon dioxide. So his base uh, carbon dioxide uh, base CO2 uh, must be higher. Uh, no. So. After 20 hours of uh, nasal high flow uh, therapy, patient markedly improved 
uh, and it was replaced by conventional oxygen therapy at four liter per minute. And after four days, oxygen was stopped and he was sent home with uh, 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 with other medications. So this study has shown that uh, in case of uh, COPD uh, with uh, chronic retention uh, with high uh, uh, partial carbon dioxide and, uh, and that means uh, uh, respiratory acidosis uh, as great improvement has shown great improvement with high flow nasal cannula after 20 uh, hour of therapy and patient has tolerated this high flow nasal cannula up to 20 hours so it has great compliance and great effect in the uh, treatment of uh, this kind of chronic disease uh, next case of uh, 79 year female of frail chest with a COPD who developed respiratory failure on second day of admission. Uh, <clears throat> her respiration rate was 45 year per, 45 uh, per minute and uh, she refused uh, uh, this uh, uh, non magic positive pressure ventilation due to previous uncomfortable experience. So she has refused uh, this uh, uh, non magic ventilation. She accepted after uh, ABGD, ABGD report, her pH was CMP19, partial carbon dioxide was 80, and bicarbonate was 22. So she also have uh, respiratory acidosis, and uh, this patient uh, received three hours of high flow nasal cannula, uh, high flow therapy, and uh, after this three hour of therapy, this pH reduced, uh, pH has improved from 7.19 to 7.36 and partial carbon dioxide has reduced from 80 to 40 and it, it is almost normal and uh, bicarbonate is, uh, is constant. So mm, with uh, within three hours, uh, this patient has improved. So it is also a great achievement. In case of patient four, he is a 84 year female with a known case of COPD with pneumonia and worsening respiratory fatigue and hypercapnia. When arrival, arrival to emergency, uh, this uh, 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 when arrival to uh, emergency, uh, she was drowsy and uh, she looks fatigued. So uh, BBG, uh, BBG was done and uh, PH was 7.18. Partial carbon dioxide was 74, bicarbonate was 18, and uh, ni uh, this nasal high flow therapy was started, uh, and uh, blood was uh, again BBG was repeated after four hour, and within four hour the uh, this uh, BBG report shows uh, great changes from uh, PS was uh, increased from 7.18 to 7.36. It is almost normal and PCO2 reduced from 74 to 48, and bicarbonate uh, was 18, from 18 to 24. That means uh, this BB, uh, BBG criteria becomes normal after four hours of uh, therapy. So this na nasal high flow result uh, was out of carbon dioxide from anatomical dead space with resulting increase in ventilatory effect. So this, uh, this study, uh, uh, this, um, this article has studied four cases. So uh, almost four cases shown that um, there is uh, uh, there is positive effect of high flow nasal cannula and patient uh, will accept uh, this high flow nasal cannula and they will tolerate this high flow nasal cannula compared to uh, non invasive ventilation. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, this high flow nasal cannula system is um, newer and uh, newer invention and it is. Uh, now it has started in our uh, uh, emergency department and so we can uh, take a benefit from this high flow nasal cannula system uh, in our hospital and in our system uh, thank you uh okay question theory
मनोज अनिराजन सुने का चाह सुने जा चाह ए अनिराजन रिकॉर्डिंग से स्टॉप करो आ उनसे चाह 